Hello, Taka here and welcome to this first video about the Japanese language for absolute beginners. Let's start with the way local children study it, and it's with the writing system. Now, a lot of people ask me what's the Japanese alphabet or do they have an alphabet? And my reply is that I prefer referring to them as writing systems, and they actually have three. So the two first ones are called kana, and then there are the Chinese characters called kanji. You'll also probably hear romaji, romaji. And Roma comes from Rome or Roman, and G means character or letter. And it's basically the Roman transcription of the Japanese language. Now, I understand that we all have different priorities, and if you just want to learn how to say hello, please, thank you, uh, or just introduce yourself, that's fine, and you'll get by with Romaji. But if you want to reach an intermediate level or more, you'll definitely need to learn all of them. There is no other way around it. You're learning a language, you have to learn its writing system. Why the heck are there so many characters? Well, there's obviously a reason for that, but we'll get there in due time. For now, let's just learn the first one, the hiragana. And before we do that, I'd like to introduce you to a website. They did not sponsor this live stream. They did not sponsor this video. Let's just have a look here. Grammar this is a gold mine, honestly. I'm telling you, there, there's just so much and uh, it's really well explained. So Tofugu, if you want to learn Japanese, basically there is a place here where you can download an entire book to learn the writing systems. So this is the cover, Learn Hiragana by Tofugu, and they explain everything. So we're going to go through that. What is Hiragana. So a lot of American people would say Hiragana. <laughs> Please don't. If you're learning Japanese, then you should pronounce things the right way. Because if you go to a Japanese person and say, I'm learning Hiragana, they might not understand. Maybe they will because they're used to American speaking or trying to speak Japanese. But please try to pronounce it in a way that Japanese people would. So Hiragana, Hiragana, Hiragana. Hiragana are a type of Japanese character. They're sort of like Japanese alphabet. So again, they're sort of like, we prefer speaking about uh, a writing system rather than alphabet. That each hiragana character is used to represent a sound. That means that by learning hiragana characters, you also learn basic Japanese pronunciation. In essence, remembering hiragana is the first step to learning Japanese. Historically speaking, hiragana comes from the kanji, from the Chinese characters. Because back in the days, it was the only writing system. It used to be Chinese characters simplified in a more cursive way, and it gave the hiragana. So that's the chart, that's the table of all the hiragana. There are 46 basic hiragana in total, typically represented in these 10 columns. So once you know the structure, it's gonna be very easy and intuitive for you to learn the whole thing. So the first column consists of five vowels. A, I, U, E, O. So the rest of the hiragana pair one of these vowels with a consonant sound. Take a look at the second column. So that's the thing, K, S, T, etc. So, a, i, u, e, o. Then we have ka, ki, ku, ke, ko. And then sa, shi, su, se, so, ta, chi, tsu, te, to, na, ni, nu, ne, no, ha, hi, fu, he, ho, ma, mi, mu, me, mo, and ya, you, yo, so there's no yi or ye, <laughs> then da, li, du, te, do. And then these are special characters, what, wa is wa, and this is o. Sometimes some people might pronounce it wo, but it's o. And then m, m, like an n, a like closed n, m, okay? So that's it. Akasata na hamayara wa okosoto no homoyoro m or homoyoro o. Sometimes you'll finish it with the other o. If you paid attention, so people who are beginners might make the mistake. In Japanese, ti doesn't exist. It's chi tu doesn't exist either. So it's ta chi tsu. So this you really have to be careful. And so sometimes I hear people say, oh, I'm learning Japanese. And they say ta ti tu te to. Then I know that they haven't been studying in detail or nobody told them that T doesn't exist. Oh, actually, same here. C doesn't exist in Japanese. It's always going to be she. So if you want to have a Japanese accent while speaking English, then all the C you can replace by she. Sa, she, su, se, so. She and not C. Chi and not T. And tsu and not tu. And who, if you listen carefully, I'm not saying fu. I'm saying who. Because I hear a lot of people saying fu. Ha, hi, hu, he, ho. So that's it for the pronunciation. Now, one thing that's very important is the stroke order. 
you have to respect the direction, otherwise it's not proper, it's not right. And it's usually gonna be from left to right and from top to bottom. And then you have like things like that swirls and circles. Also, what's wonderful about this book, if you wanna print it, you have exercises sheets. So basically you can just use a pen and go over it. And what you can see here is that the character has to be centered. So there is a square here and it has to be right in the middle of the square. Languages that use the Roman alphabet, you can write in cursive, so you can attach all the letters. But in Japanese, don't do that. Every character has to be in its own box. And the more you'll get used to it, the more you'll get used to writing so that it fits a line and that each character has its own space in the square. They give you mnemonics to help you memorize and learn. In Romaji, right? A. Romaji can also be useful if you type on a computer or on a phone. Some people use that type of keyboard. So you type in Romaji and it would find the hiragana or the kanji. Just to keep in mind that some people do use the Romaji for writing purposes. A is pronounced like A, like when you come to a realization. How to remember A. Look closely and find the letter A inside of it. So that's very clever. As you can see here, there is the letter A. So if you want to print that book, use a Sharpie, or if you have an iPad, you can also do that with your finger. One, two, and three. Then we have E. E is pronounced like E in eel. You have to be careful here because in eel, it's a long vowel, eel. Whereas in Japanese, it's a short one, E. To remember this kana, just think of a couple of eels hanging out. They're upright because they're trying to mimic the letter I, which also stands upright and happens to be the way you spell out this character in Romaji. <laughs> Perfect. Practice E. So two strokes, again, top to bottom with the little angle here and top to bottom again from left to right. One, two. Then we have U. How to pronounce U. U is pronounced like U. Ah. U. In other words, it sounds just like U in Uno the card game, or the number one in Spanish. It's not exactly like the Spanish U, because it's not as close, so it's a bit more open. U, uno, but in Japanese it's U, U. I don't know if you can tell the difference. The Spanish U and the Japanese U, U, A, I, U, U, U. To remember this kana, notice the U shape right in it. That's right. There's another similar hiragana, Tsu, but that one isn't wearing a hat like you are. Ooh, ah, what a nifty hat. They make plenty of puns for you to remember. Two strokes, one and two, the actual U. How to pronounce E. E is pronounced like the E in egg. In Romaji, write E. How to remember E. Look at this kana and find the exotic bird laying exotic eggs inside of it. So again, exotic eggs. The feather on its head gives away that it's special and exotic and the flourish looks like its body and tail. How adorable. Practice E. Two strokes. So I know the second one is a bit complicated, but it's only two. O. How to pronounce O. O is pronounced like you're saying O. It's the O sound in origami. So I know in English we say origami, but in Japanese it's going to be origami. Origami. How to remember O. Can you see the letter O in here? Two times. This one looks similar to A. Except for one key difference, there are two letter O symbols visible in there. Make sure you use this to differentiate this kana O and the similar kana A. Three strokes. One, two, and three. Let's practice reading. So now you'll be able to read these words. Ah, ah means ah, something you say when you come to a realization. Then we have ao. Ao means blue. Ao. Ye. Ye means house. Ie, ue, ue, ue means above. O, o. So here we have the character o, but together with the u, it actually makes a long o. O. Instead of o, we say o. O means king. A, a o. Ie, ue, o. Then we have the second column. Ka. How to pronounce ka? Ka is just the K sound plus A, making a ka sound. It's pronounced like ka in karma. See how this kind of looks like a mosquito? What a convenient coincidence. Mosquitoes happen to be called ka in Japanese. You also say, cut it out, darn mosquito, when they try to suck your blood. So that should be easy to remember. Ka. Yes, mosquito in Japanese is ka. Three strokes. 
one, two, and three. Key. Key is just the key sound plus e making a key sound. It's pronounced key, just like in the word key. Well, again, in English, key has a long vowel. Always remember that in Japanese, it's short vowels. So we wouldn't say key, but key, key. Notice how the shape of key resembles a key. In some fonts, the bottom part is detached from the main part. For example, key. The pronunciation is still key though. So you see here, it's all attached, just like they show here. To practice writing key, don't connect these two strokes because it's supposed to be two different strokes. So four strokes, one, two, three, and four. And the reason why in some font it's connected is because it goes back to using a brush. But for you writing with a pen, I would not recommend doing that. Ku. It's pronounced ku like both syllables of the word cuckoo. Or just the first syllable depending on your variety of English. How to remember ku. To remember this, think of this kind of being the mouth of a cuckoo bird popping out and saying cuckoo 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 cuckoo. Practice writing ku. Ku is only one stroke. Very easy. But pretty much like the mathematical symbol of greater than. Ke. It's pronounced like ke in kelp. See how this kind of resembles some wiggly kelp. Three strokes. One, two, three. Top to bottom, left to right, and again top to bottom with a little angle. Ko. Ko is pronounced like ko in cohabitating. In British English, it is more like ko in coin. How to remember ko? Ko is a couple of cohabitating worms. They're so happy together, cohabitating the same area. Alternatively, you could imagine a couple of short cords lying on the ground next to each other. And two strokes. One, two. So left to right, and left to right again with a little angle here. Let's practice reading. So ka, we saw that it meant a mosquito. Ka. Then ki. Ki by itself is a tree. Then we have ku ki. Kuki, kuki, and it means air. Ke, ke by itself means hair, so we have air and hair. Koe, koe, koe means voice. Sa, how to pronounce sa? Sa is pronounced like sa in salsa. How to remember sa? Notice how this kind of looks like two hands stirring a bowl of salsa. This salsa is so chunky and thick, you need two hands to stir it. One, two, and three. Left to right, top to bottom, with a little angle, and three. And again here, the second and the third strokes could be connected depending on the font, but please try to avoid that. She is pronounced like she in sheep. Take note that this is the first exception kind of that doesn't follow the patterns that show up everywhere else. Instead of being si, it's she. How to remember she? This kind of looks like a giant shepherd's crook used to herd sheep. Bah, get in that corral, sheep. She, only one stroke, very easy. Su, su is pronounced like the word su, or su in suit. See the swing doing a looty loop and throwing that poor kid off of it? Imagine him screaming, I'm gonna sue somebody for this, as he flies off into the distance. Su, two strokes, left to right, and top to bottom with a little loop inside. Su, se, se is pronounced like se in cell. This kind of looks like a mouth with a big vampire fang in it. Someone's trying to sell you a set of vampire teeth because they're just so sexy. Oh, Dracula always trying to make a quick buck. So, it's pronounced like so in soda. See how this kind of looks like a mouth slurping soda. One stroke. It looks like many, but it's only one. Let's practice reading. Saka. Saka. Saka means steep hill. And it's actually funny because my last name is Kamisaka. And there is a Chinese character, there is a kanji for it, and it's used in my last name. Kamisaka. Kamisaka. Saka. Shio. Shio means salt. Shio. Then we have su. Su by itself means vinegar. Then we have se. Se by itself means height. Soko. 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 So again, the U here makes a long SO. It's not SOUKO, it's SOUKO. SOUKO, and it means a warehouse. TA. TA is just the T sound plus A, making a TA sound. It's pronounced like TA in TACO. TA. How to remember TA? 
Use your imagination and see this can as a fork, taco, and lime garnish for your taco. Wait, you're eating a taco with a fork? That's a bit weird, but you do you, pal. <laughs> well, it's been scientifically proven that the more original your mnemonic, the more you're gonna remember. So this is perfect, actually. And it's a lot of humor as well. Ta has four strokes. Left to right, top to bottom, left to right, and again, left to right. Ta. And it's funny because we all know what taco is in Mexico, but in Japan, taco means an octopus. Taco. Now you know how to say octopus in Japanese. You have a good mnemonic for that. Taco. Chi. This is the second exception, hiragana. Instead of a T sound, it's a chi sound. Try not to forget this. You know when someone tells you to say cheese when taking a picture of you? This kind of looks like that forced smile you have to make every time you're in a group photo. So that's two strokes. One, two. And it's funny because with the font they use, chi looks like a reversed sa. But sa has three strokes, whereas chi has only two. Tsu is pronounced like tsu in tsunami. Tsunami is how we say it in Japanese. I know in English we say tsunami. Sometimes we even skip the T, tsunami. But in Japanese it's tsunami. This is another exception, hiragana. Instead of saying tu, we say tsu. Try not to forget this. Look at the swoosh of this hiragana. Doesn't it look like a big wave of tsunami? Only one stroke. Tsu. Te. Te is pronounced like te in telescope. Can you see a good old telescope? It's a handheld one. In Japanese, hand is te. That should help you remember that this kind of looks like an old school hand te held telescope. Practice writing te. It's only one stroke. To. It's pronounced like to in to. In British English, it sounds like to in top. This kind of looks just like someone's toe with a little nail or splinter in it. Imagine how much this would hurt if it was your toe. Two strokes. One, two. Let's practice reading. Tatsu. Tatsu. Tatsu means to stand. And here it's funny because if you stress the first character, tatsu, it means to stand. But if you reverse the stress and you put it on the second one, tatsu, tatsu, it means the dragon. Actually, one way of saying dragon. Chika. Chika. So here, the E in chi can be devocalized when you say fast and it's going to sound more natural. So instead of saying Chika, you can say chika, chika. It means the underground. Tsuki, same here. The U sound in tsu can be devocalized. And you can say tsuki instead of tsuki. Tsuki, tsuki. And it means the moon. Te, so we saw that already. Te means hand. To means end. Anata to watashi. Anata to watashi. You and me. Na. Na is pronounced like na in nachos. Na. The nun is praying in front of the cross, asking for nachos because she's craving a delicious snack. The cross up in the air should be the main giveaway that this is na. Four strokes. One, two, three, and four. Ni. Ni is pronounced like ni in needle. Do you see the needle pulling the thread? Ni. Three strokes. One, two, three. Nu. Nu. Nu is pronounced like nu in noodle. This kind of looks like some noodles. There are several other kana that are similar to this one. De, me, ne, wa. But you know this one is noodles because there are no sharp angles in it. It's 100% smooth and bendable, like noodles. It even has an extra loop at the bottom because it is a noodle, top to bottom, and a big swirl and a little loop. Nu, ne. Ne is pronounced like ne in Nelly. This is Nelly the cat. There are other kana very similar to this one. Nu, de, me, wa. But you know this is different. Why? Because it has a loop at the end for the tail. And it's not super bendable like nu, noodle is. See those sharp corners on the left? To top things off, Nelly is a necromancer. Why? I have no idea. You'll have to ask her. It must have something to do with the undead cat army she's creating. Oh my god, this is just too much. Also, if you know the word neko, Japanese word for cat, you can use that too. This is a neko. Neko. Practice ne. From top to bottom, and a lot of angles and a little loop at the end. Ne, but it's only two strokes. No. No. 
No is pronounced like no in nose or nori. Nori is a Japanese word. See the big pig nose there? You can also think of this as a no smoking sign, the one with a cigarette and big red circle slash through it. Pick the one that sticks with you the best. No, only one stroke and one big loop. Let's practice reading. Nasu. Nasu is eggplant. Then we have niku. Niku. Niku means meat. Nuno. Nuno. Nuno means fabric. Neko. We saw this one already. Neko means cat. Then we have no. No. So again, no u. But when u is placed after an o sound, it's going to make it a long vowel. So it's not no u. It's no, no, and it means the brain. Ha, ha is pronounced like ha in ha, ha, ha like laughing. This kind of looks like an uppercase letter H plus a lowercase letter A. What does that spell? Ha, why are you laughing? Stop that. Make sure you can see the H and A in the kana. So yeah, H and A, I've never seen that, uh, but just be careful that it's not connected here. So it's three strokes. Top to bottom, one, two, and three with a little loop. He, he, it's the English pronoun he, that's very good. In other words, it sounds like he in heat. He has a big nose. See that big nose? Now say it out loud. He has a big nose. He, only one stroke. He, who. So as I mentioned, who is halfway between the F and H sounds, plus U, making a who sound. So it's not fu, it's not hu, it's hu, hu. It's pronounced like a softly blown out version of fu in fool, or sometimes hu in hoop. How to remember fu? Someone is over there dancing like a fool. What's that around their neck? Oh, that's a hula hoop. That's why they're twisting their body so hard. Fu. So here, the first and second one are connected, but please try to separate them. One, two, three, and four. It's four strokes. He, he is pronounced like he in help or Helen. Do you know the famous mountain, Mount St. Helens? This kind of isn't totally flat like Helen is, but it's pretty squat looking. That's why this one is Helens. If it ever erupts again, people will need help. He, only one stroke. He, ho. It's pronounced like ho in ho or ho 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 ho. The line on the left is a chimney, as you can see here. The right side is a mutated Santa Claus. He has four arms, a snake tail, and no head. Out of his neck, he's uttering, ho, 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 ho. Hopefully, he doesn't come down your chimney. This is far-fetched, but I like it. It's very original, and I hope it's going to help you remember. Practice writing ho. So that's four strokes, top to bottom, left to right, left to right, ho, with a little loop at the end. Let's practice reading. Hai, hai, hai means yes. Hito, hito. So here, again, the E sound, you can devocalize and it's going to sound more natural. Hito, hito. It means a person. Fuku, fuku. Fuku means clothes. Heso, heso. Heso means belly button. Then we have hono, 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 hono. Actually, it doesn't mean the fire. Fire is hi. Hono means the flame. To some people, it's the same thing, but there is a bit of nuance. It's a little bit different. Hono. So hono means flame. Then we have ma. Ma. Ma is pronounced like the English word ma, meaning mother. In other words, it sounds like ma in mark. How to remember ma? Removing your head, doubling your hands and arms. What sort of evil magic is this? What makes it weirder is that your mama is the one doing this magic. Imagine your ma looking like this. Ah, so three strokes, left to right, left to right again, top to bottom with a little loop. Ma, mi. It's pronounced like the English word mi. In other words, it sounds like me in meat. Looks like lucky number 21. Who just hit the blackjack? Me. Who just turned 21 as well? Me. Listen to me singing my own birthday song. Me, 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 me. Me. Two strokes. One, two. Moo. Moo is pronounced like what cows say in English. Moo. In other words, it sounds like moo in mood. Moo. Moo, says the cow. Moo. Three strokes. 
One, two with a little loop, and three. Me. Me is pronounced like me in mess. Look at that beautiful eye. It's so beautiful because of the makeup on it. Gotta look pretty in the eyes or else your ensemble will just be me. Me. Top to bottom and a big swirl that looks like no, except for the fact that you have to start from a bit higher. Mo. Mo is pronounced like mo in more. You want to catch more fish so you add more worms to your hook. So here is the hook with two worms. Three strokes, the big hook, and the two worms. One, two, from left to right. Let's practice. Mae. Mae. Mae means forward. Mae. Mimi. Mimi means ear. Mimi. Then we have mushi. Mushi. We're not gonna say what it means in German, but it could help you remember this word. Uh, but in Japanese, it means a bug. Mushi. Mushi. Me. Me means I. We saw that already. Me. Momo. Momo means peach. Momo. Ya. Ya is pronounced like ya in yat. In British English, it sounds like ya in yak. See how this kind of looks like a yat with an anchor going down. It's even got a little flag on the rear. How cute. Alternatively, you can think of this as the face of a yak too. Ya. Three strokes. One, two, and three. You. You is pronounced like the English word you. This kind of is a very unique looking fish. It looks like a big eyeball swimming in the water. What is it looking at? You, you big goofball. Isn't it weird how fish always look like they're staring at you? You. One, two. It does look like a fish. Yo. Yo is pronounced like yo in yo-yo. In British English, it's more like yo in yonder. Yo. Yo. This kind of looks like the letters Y and O. And look, you can even play yo-yo with it. Look at it slide down and back up again. It's mesmerizing, yo. Yo. Two strokes. One, two. Left to right. Top to bottom with a little loop. Only three kana in the Y column. Let's practice reading. Yakiniku. So we already know niku. Niku is meat. Yakiniku. Yaki is grilled. Yakiniku. Yakiniku. Yuki. Yuki means snow. Yuki. Yokai. Yokai. So here again, yo u makes it along yo. Yokai. Yokai means yokai. Folk tale creatures. Actually, I translated to ghosts, Japanese ghosts. That, that is pronounced like a combination of la la la, like cheering, and la la la, like singing. Now, you have to be careful because it's not gonna be an English ra. It's not gonna be a ra ra. It's a bit hard to explain with English examples because the R column sounds kind of a mixture of R, L, and D sounds. So that's the thing. In English, the letter R will be pronounced R, but never pronounce it that way in Japanese because it just doesn't exist. So either close to a rolled R, like they do in Spanish or Italian, a trilled R, or an L sound, but don't pronounce it the English way. So da, da, so between ra, and la, da. That looks like a rabbit that's standing and facing left. Look at its big droopy ears, so cute. Practice writing da. One, two strokes. Di, di is pronounced like a combination of re in read and li in leak. Same here, don't pronounce it like an English r. It's not re, it's di. Always pronounce it like closer to an l or a Spanish r, di. How to remember di? The reeds are swaying in the wind. This kana is also commonly written without the connection in the middle, like di, which looks even more reed-like. So that's the thing. It looks like one stroke, but it's two different ones. One and two, from top to bottom. Di. Du. Du is pronounced like a combination of ru in rule or root and lu in loop. Again, don't pronounce it like rule or root. This is just do which you'll learn in a sec with a loop at the end. Nu is a crazier root. Why? Because there's a loop at the end. Remember a root. Nu, only one stroke. De. De is pronounced like a combination of re in wretch and le in lead. How to remember de? This looks like a guy kneeling on the ground, retching up his dinner. This kind of is similar to me, wa, nu, and ne. What makes this one different is the curve at the back. You can identify this as the guy's knees bending, which makes it clear that he's keeled over retching his guts out. 
the two strokes, top to bottom, and a few angles. Lo. Lo is pronounced like a combination of ro in road and lo in load. In British English, it's more like ro in rot or lo in long. Lo. Again, just repeat after me. Lo. How to remember lo? This is the counterpart to lo. Except this one doesn't have a loop at the end. So this kana is just a plain old road. Lo. One stroke. Let's practice reading. Daiyu. Daiyu means thunderstorm. Daiyu. Diyu. Diyu. It means a reason. Lusu. Lusu means absent. Dekishi. Dekishi. So here the E sound in ki can be devocalized. Dekishi. Rosoku. Rosoku. So here U after do makes it a long vowel. Rosoku. Rosoku means candle. Rosoku. Wa. Wa is pronounced like wa in wasabi. So in English we'll say wasabi in Japanese is gonna be wasabi. Wa is pronounced like wa in wasabi. How to remember wa? This kind of looks like a wasp flying straight up. It looks similar to de, nu, ne, and me. And it looks especially similar to ne. You know ne is Nelly the cat because of the curl of the tail on the end. So you can imagine the cat chasing this wasp, which is why it's flying straight up to get away. Wa. O. O is pronounced like O in origami, just like the vowel O. It used to be pronounced like wo, but now it sounds exactly like O. Wa yells the guy with no chin. Someone threw a boomerang into his mouth. That's pretty wa worthy, I think. Note, why two kana for the O sound? Very good question. Unlike O, wo is primarily used as a grammar element called a particle. It marks the object of a sentence. Practice writing wo. Three strokes, left to right. Top to bottom with a little angle and another angle. Mm. Mm. It's the only kana that consists of a single consonant. It's pronounced like the ending N sound in pen. Pen. This kana looks just like a lowercase n in English. They happen to be the same sound as well. How convenient. Mm. Let's practice reading. Warau. Warau. Warau means to laugh. Warau. Mong. Mong means a gate. Mong. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know with a thumbs up or in the comments. And don't forget to share and subscribe to support this channel. それではまた。